Previously, I described how a vacuum tube uh, such as this could be used as a diode because uh, if you attach your filament, it would get hot, the electrons would boil off uh, and they would be then attracted towards the positive terminal that you attach here. So you get a flow of electrons only in one direction. So they can be used for rectifying purposes. Well, there's something else that you can do with this and you can use this uh, as an amplifier. So a very over, over, oversimplification of this model is if you were to attach another sort of metal grid inside the, the, the center of this device, if you were to apply a small varying um, current here, well, this would then also vary, the signal here would vary. So you, the current that is able to pass through the grid to the other side would vary in proportion of this. But because this is a much larger voltage than is applied over here, the signal that comes out on, on this side would be basically a really big version of what you put in. In this way, this kind of device could act like an amplifier. And these things were really huge, right? Because they're old vacuum tubes. And now we can replace these with little transistors, which do the same job, or in fact, ICs, microchips that, that have many, many transistors integrated onto them. Uh, and now if it wasn't for this uh, ability to be able to amplify, uh, we wouldn't have been able to get telephone signals across the, the range of distances that they could eventually. And you can see that being given here in these images. These show how the telephone telegraph signals were eventually able to spread across the entire United States. And that wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the invention of amplifiers because the signals were just too small. So how is it that we've been able to replace this kind of technology with this kind of technology? Well, we just covered PN junctions, where you have a P-type and an N-type semiconductor that are together. Now we're going to extend this model and create a three-layered device. So these can either be PNP or NPN. So let's describe what's going on here exactly. This is a transistor. And to explain exactly how they work, I'm going to take an NPN transistor as an example and sketch what that consists of and talk you through the operation. So we have three different layers of semiconducting material. They're extrinsic semiconductors because they've been doped. Here you see you've got an N-doped region, P-doped region, and another N-doped region. So three different layers. Now we'll start with this, this end. You have a large N-doped region. So don't forget that when we have an N-type semiconductor, the majority charge carriers are electrons. Here we have a very thin P-doped region. It's very thin and the negative uh, symbol here on the P, it doesn't mean that they're negative charges because we know that in a P-type semiconductor the majority charge carriers are holes which are positive. The negative symbol here actually denotes that this region is very lightly doped. So it's thin and lightly doped so it doesn't have that many holes as the majority charge carriers. Here we have another N doped region. It's not quite as large as this region here. It's just moderately sized. Uh, it's larger than this very thin P region. And it's got a plus sign on here. And that denotes that it's very heavily doped. So actually, there are lots and lots of extra uh, electrons in this region here. Now, you can see from, from what my transistor looks like, it's got three little legs. So we have three connections to these. And actually, uh, I'll label those quickly. So this one is known as the emitter. This is the base and this is the collector. So in fact, these layers are also known as the emitter layer, the base layer and the collector layer. So what you should notice here is that we've got essentially two PN junctions together, right? So here I have an NP junction and here I have a PN junction. In fact, that's why they're known as bipolar junction transistors or BJTs, because we have two junctions, whereas a diode just had one PN junction. So we've got two junctions here. And in fact, if you think about it, 
This is the equivalent of having two diodes back to back. So it would look something like And this is because we know that a diode is a p-n junction. So here we've got two p-n junctions attached together. And don't forget that um, when you look at the circuit symbol of a diode, conventional current, it, it, they point in the direction of conventional current. So conventional current would go this way through this diode or that way through that diode. So it's the opposite to the direction that the electrons flow. So this isn't the circuit symbol for, for an NPN junction or an NPN transistor. I'll show you those a little bit later. But this, this device is equivalent to having two different diodes that face in opposite directions. And you might think, well, what use is this, right? Because no matter which way around I connect this in a circuit, I'm always gonna have one of these diodes in reverse bias, so no current will flow. So let's uh, use this as an example. I'm going to make this side positive and this side negative. So I apply a power supply, I apply a potential difference across my uh, emitter and my collector, such as this. So that's the same as making this side negative and this side positive here. You can see normally my current would want to flow this way because um, conventional current flows from positive to negative. So my current wants to flow this way, but it's being blocked by this diode. This PN junction is in reverse bias. So no current will flow through my device if I make this side negative and this side positive. Even if I were to switch them, actually no current would flow because the other diode would be in reverse bias. So when I apply a voltage, a potential difference across these two, uh, sides of the, the transistor, no current flows, and the device is off. Now, what happens if I apply a very small positive potential difference, so a potential difference across here, so, if, uh, so I make the base terminal positive with respect to the emitter. If I do that, and don't forget, this is a p-n junction here. So if the potential difference is approximately 0.7 volts between these two, then I essentially have this diode, this p-n junction, would be in forward bias, right? Because here is positive, uh, here's negative, and I make this terminal here positive, but a lot smaller than this. So the potential difference across here is a lot smaller than across here. This is a big potential difference. Now what happens is we have um, electrons. We have, this is very heavily doped. So we have many electrons, free electrons in our N-type layer here. And now we've made this uh, connected to a, a positive terminal. So this diode here is in forward bias and these electrons will start to flow into this p layer however we said that this p layer is only very lightly doped and it's also incredibly thin so what that means is you have a vast number of electrons here and only a few holes there and what happens is these electrons move across into the base layer but there's like a big buildup of these electrons, right? Because only a little current is going to flow here out of the base. Or the other way, into, don't forget electrons flow in the opposite direction to our conventional current. So we have a very small base current uh, and we have a buildup and a backlog of these electrons that are coming over into the base. So they, these electrons that build up here, now you've got a buildup of negative charges here, they will be drawn across the device over to this large potential difference because you have a large positive potential difference on this terminal at the collector. So even though you get a small current that is running through the base in the opposite direction of the electrons moving down here, the rest of the electrons will move across the device. So you have a small current through the emitter and the base, and you have a large current going through uh, from the collector. So the electrons are going through to the collector. In fact, that's why it's called the collector, and this is why this side's called the emitter, because the emitter emits electrons, which the majority of them go through to the collector, but only 
when you apply a small base current or a small uh, potential difference across the base that's uh, positive with respect to the emitter. So this is the transistor in the on state. So this means that we can use uh, a PNP or uh, an NP. So a PNP works in, in the, the opposite way. This is a PNP junction, and we can use these transistors either as switches to switch, them, switch something on or off electronically rather than mechanically. Um, but we can also use these as an amplifier because basically the same as what are the situation that we had with the vacuum tube where you had a small signal that would, um, that would modulate a large signal, right? So you had amplification of that little signal. Well, this is the same because you can have a small current here at the base and that small current is controlling the larger current that is flowing through the entire device. The circuit symbol for a transistor is shown here. So this is for an MPN transistor. Now for a PNP transistor, it's the opposite process. And if you look at the circuit symbol, it's, it's the same, but the arrow is going in the other direction. The arrow denotes the direction of current flow, not the direction of the electrons. So you have to think about conventional current flow. To help you remember which way the circuit symbol is, you can remember not pointing in. Not pointing in is for an NPN transistor, and that means the arrow is not pointing inwards. And for a PNP, you can use the, the phrase pointing in permanently, and that will remind you that it's a PNP transistor symbol. Now, in order to understand how transistors can work in a circuit, I need to show you a few different types of circuit diagrams. This circuit shows how you can switch a transistor on and off by applying this uh, voltage that's required at the base. So I've got my NPM transistor in the circuit. Here, you've got your, your power supply. Um, here, I've just drawn a lamp in the circuit. So this is your main circuit. So if this switch is open here, then you have a positive uh, terminal that's connected here, which is my collector. And this is my emitter here, which is negatively charged. Because there's nothing applied to the base, no current will flow through this circuit. However, once I connect this, you've got a resistor across here. This, this terminal here is a ground. So you end up with a small positive uh, bias across here. And that is enough to switch this device on. So the transistor switches on and your light bulb will light up. Now here we're using a switch to switch the transistor. So it's not that useful in, in this kind of case, but it, it you know, works to demonstrate a point. I suppose the, the only point where this would be useful is um, because this switch is uh, it only has the base current going through it and the base current is very small. So if you have a mechanical switch that can't take a lot of current, then the currents going through this are small compared to having a, a, a mechanical switch in, in, in something that has a very high current load. What you could do though is swap this out and this is where uh, transistors become more useful because you could replace this with, for example, a, a type of sensor. So let's see, we could have like an LDR, right? So uh, we already talked a little bit about light dependent resistors. So if I replace this with a light dependent resistor, well, what you find is when there's no light, the resistance will be very high. So if the resistance here is very high, there's a, a potential drop across here. So between here, zero, I'm going to end up with a positive potential on my base um, when it's dark, when there's high resistance, which means when it's dark, my bulb would be on, for instance. And then as soon as it gets lighter and lighter, then the resistance here will drop away. And when the resistance drops away, then my potential here will also drop away and my bulb would be off. So this is where they're really useful because you can use them with some sort of sensing device. Um, just another couple of examples. You might have uh, a PTC, for instance. So if you have 
uh, uh, this is a positive temperature coefficient, so a type of thermistor that as it gets hotter, the resistance also increases. And in that case, you could have a device which maybe you connect this to, to a motor, for instance, so that when it gets hot, the resistance increases, so I get a positive potential here at the base and the motor will turn on to turn a fan or something like that. Um, so these are the kinds of things that you could use that for. And so this is as a switch, but you could also have the situation where I now connect this to something like a microphone. So I have a very small uh, small voltage supply here. I have a microphone, and then if the signal of my microphone then varies here, then I could have a loudspeaker, for instance, on the other side, and my signal on the other side would be an amplified version of that. So that's just a few different examples of how these things can be used in practice.